It's Friday here at Bob's Magic Emporium. You know, it's time for all new The School of Magic. Class is in session every Friday here at The School of Magic. The only show where I teach you how to do a magic trick after I perform it. This one I'm calling Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. And no, you don't have to be a girl to perform this trick. Normally, I'll use a lady volunteer. That's why I call it Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. And you'll see why in just a moment. So I have a shuffle up deck of cards to prove they really are all mixed up. I'm going to give them a couple of shuffles right here in front of your eyes. There we go. That's one. I'll do two shuffles and I'll even do a cut. So perfect. And I'll give them a cut just like that. All right. So if there's a spectator here, they tell me stop whenever they want. So we'll say stop me right there. I think that seems good. Yep, that looks good. All right. So this is going to be the card that they stop me at right there. And it's the Ace of Diamonds. Really great card. So um, let me show you the reason why I call this trick Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. I'll usually have the lady volunteer cup their hands and I'll flick that diamond right off the card. There's the diamond, and it's now off of the card. That's diamonds are a girl's best friend. All right, so a really great trick. Let me tell you what you're gonna need. You're gonna need two ace of diamonds for this trick, and you need to go somewhere uh, like a craft store or a hobby store and pick up little knickknacks. They're gonna have these little diamond knickknacks. Usually they come in a pack of three. Uh, usually there's two small ones and a large one. So you want to make sure you get the large one because the small ones sometimes don't look like diamonds. This looks like a diamond. Uh, this may be a trick out on the market. I think there is one like this, but it uses a larger diamond and it may not use the ending that I use. I think it uses a blank card for the ending. I have a card where the pips are still on the card. So it's like the big diamond off the center fell off. Um, so let me explain how to uh, do the trick. You need an ace of diamonds regular, and then you need one with the diamond removed in the middle. Now, you may be saying to yourself, do they sell these? Not that I know of. You need to make your own. And here's how to make your own. Uh, I don't have another ace of diamonds, so we're going to use another card. But I'm going to use a two of spades. So you need, um, to, to get the diamond off the card, you're going to need an eraser. And uh, here's what you're going to do. You're going to, I'm going to move the mat out of the way. It may not work with the mat. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the eraser and you're just going to go over the pip of the card. So you're just going to rub over it. Now it's going to take a little bit to get that off. So you're just going to keep rubbing over the pip. And because it's printed with special inks, I'm going to try to steady my counter because the counter is moving. Because it's made with special inks, notice that you can actually rub away the pip on a card. So you're going to keep rubbing away this pip here. And uh, just keep rubbing. And it's going to take a little bit. You may want, if you're a younger person, you may want an adult to help you. Uh, the reason being is because your arm gets really tired afterwards. It's a good arm workout to rub this back and forth. Anyways, I'm not going to take all these off. But notice that it does get lighter and lighter and lighter until you can barely see it. And then you want something kind of like this. So you want the pip to be completely gone. Now, you can, if you want, stop when it's sort of light like this. I would go a little bit more. Let me try to go a little bit more here. I would go a little bit more, but you could leave the outline of the pip on the card if you wanted. Uh, let me try to do this. Keep doing this here. There we go. So you could leave the outline if you wanted. I don't. I like to completely remove the diamond on there. So it's like it's fallen right off the card. Okay. So now you've got that done. Uh, let's, let, let's say you've got your ace of diamonds already completed. Uh, and you have a regular diamond as well that you've done nothing to and your little hobby diamond. Now your little hobby craft diamond goes in your pocket. Or it can go in your jacket pocket, whatever. If you have jackets with side pockets, you can put it in there too. I put it in my pants pocket. And uh, whatever side feels comfortable to you to put it on, doesn't matter. So your regular Ace of Diamonds goes right on top. And then on top of that goes your gimmicked one, the one that has the pip completely removed. So here's what you're going to do. What you're going to do is you're going to uh, talk about how diamonds are a girl's best friend. And, and like I say, I usually use a woman from the audience for this. And I'll have them come up, on, uh, come up and do the trick. So the first thing you want to do is you can do a ribbon spread if you want like that to show the cards are all different. As I talked about um, last week with the world's greatest card trick, I said that you can apply pressure and spread so you can kind of get a nice little block of cards right here because you don't want to spread the first two cards and show two aces of diamonds. That would not be good. 
So I like to keep a little pressure as I spread. That way it kind of makes a little bit of a block right here so they can't see the first two cards. I show them and then I say, but you may believe that they're in some kind of order. So I will do a standard riffle shuffle, just making sure that I don't riffle shuffle the top two. Let me show you how to do that. If you not, don't know how to riffle shuffle, it's very easy. All you do is you start with the other hand that does not have the ace of diamonds on top. So the ace of diamonds are in this hand. I'll start with this one. You're gonna thumb down uh, like one or two cards and then you're gonna thumb down one or two and just keep alternating back and forth. When you get to the top, you're gonna to leave about a block of cards. Notice I've left about a block here and just let them fall. What that does is keep the top two cards, your two aces right on top. Pretty easy, pretty simple. And then you can do that a couple more times. I like to do it twice. So and then I do it again. So and then I just go whoop like that. And notice that I started the uh, my my left hand first. Then I did my right hand and I ended with that block of cards with this little block of cards dropping down on top. And then I could do the fake cut that I did. I did a fake cut as well. This is a very deceptive fake cut. Even though that doesn't look very deceptive, it really does fool people. All you do is you cut the cards in half. You give the top half, the original top half, which is this one here, a couple taps on the bottom. So you go tap, tap, tap and then drop everything down. It looks deceptive when done up to speed. So when you do like a riffle shuffle, like that, and then you do your cut like this, it looks very deceptive, like you've done something, but it's hard for the audience to tell. Now at this point, you do um, uh, a force of a card. Now you can use any force that you want. I like to use this one because you wanna make sure that you're in a double lift position after you force the card. Let me explain what you can do. Now if you're a beginner magician, you don't really have very good sleight of hand skills. You're kind of the paper cut kind of magician. All you can do is just say, let's see what card ended up on top after we cut. And then you can do your double lift. I'll talk about what a double lift is in a moment if you didn't see last week's School of Magic. Uh, but what I do is I tell the spectator to tell me stop as I riffle down the side of the cards and they tell me stop. And what I do is I pick up everything above my finger. So let me see if I can get this on camera. So I pick up all of these cards above my finger. Now, naturally, when you do this forcing of a card, naturally one card, notice, if I can get that on camera, notice one card is staying behind. Now, if the one card just stayed behind, you're gonna have that gimmicked card, and that's gonna be the one that they choose. Normally, when you do this force, you'd say stop, you pick up, one card falls, and you hand them that card. In this case, we're gonna do something a little bit different, and I've actually got this force to work a little bit differently. You're gonna tell them stop whenever you want, they stop you right there. You're gonna lift up, but you're also gonna hold tension on the bottom card. That's gonna make two cards fall, as one. So when they say stop, you say stop, you lift up, and two cards will fall. And actually, you might even get a few more cards to fall too. Notice that I got a couple cards. That's fine if you get a couple cards to fall. So they say stop, you lift up, couple cards, whoops, I just lifted up one there. Uh, they say stop, you lift up, and if, and if you lift up and notice that only one card wants to fall, you just release your grip a little bit on the top of the cards right up here, and they'll fall, and then you say, let's see where you stop me at. What I normally like to do too is after they've told me stop, so they stop me, and I lift up and I retain the couple cards there, like the one or two cards, I will then put these cards on the bottom. You can also set them off to the side if you want. So now you do your double lift. How you do a double lift, if you didn't see last week's School of Magic, it's pretty easy. You just lift up on the cards, by doing a thumb count. Thumb count works like this. I'm gonna show you from the front. What it would be, but instead of, but you do it on the back side with your thumb, is you're lifting up one card, then you're lifting up another card. And I can't seem to do that in the front, but you lift up two cards. From the back, it would just be, if I can get that, whoops, there we go, one, and then you do a second lift up with the finger. And then normally, like I said last week, I like to kind of tilt the cards up like this. That way, I can lift up those cards. Don't over lift either. Don't go like this, because that looks too sneaky. Just do a small little lift, about that much. Can I get that on camera? There we go. About that much, just lift up a little bit, and then you can slide your fingers right there on the corner. As I said last week, don't double lift this way. Always double lift down at the corners like this. So turn it over at the corner. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna lift at the corner and turn over two cards. Notice you got two cards here, but you're gonna turn them over together as one, like that. Simple and easy. 
And then you show the card and say, there's, okay, Ace of Diamonds. And then you turn the cards back over. And when you turn them back over, casually reach into your pocket. Don't make a scene. Just casually reach in there. And maybe put your hand in there for a moment. Keep your hand in your pocket for a moment or two. Don't just reach in and come out because they may think you got something in your hand. So reach in there and talk about, you know, uh, they say diamonds are a girl's best friend and, and talk about the diamonds. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take just the top card off. When you first do this trick, when you first um, erase the pip off the card, it may want to like stick to that card. The, both cards may want to stick together. So you may just have to take your fingertips and push that card off. So anyways, you push the card off, bring, the, bring your hand with the diamond. So you've palmed the diamond in your hand. You've got it hidden in your hand. Bring it up. Put this card over your hand so you're covering the diamond. Don't open this hand too early. So when you go to palm it, don't do this. Just do like this and go like that so it looks natural. Then you're going to talk about how, oh, we're going to flick the card. What you can do is flick it with your finger, or you can take another card and flick it like this. It's up to you. Flick the card, and when you flick it, drop the diamond onto the table. So it goes like this. You can use the card and go flick, and you've just dropped the diamond to the table. If it falls like that, if it falls so the point is facing up, just turn it over like that. So again, you go like this, you flick, it falls, and then you say, see, diamonds are actually a girl's best friend. Turn over the card, and the diamond is off the card, and it's right there. It's really cool. Another way you can do this trick is um, what you can do is have your uh, gimmicked card. I call this one the gimmick card on the top and then put your regular card on top. What you can do is do a couple uh, cuts and a couple shuffles like this. And then what you can do is you can do your standard um, forcing of the card this way. Say stop, they lift up. This time you only drop one card. You show them the one card, you have them look at it, you turn it over and keep it face up. Then oh, This is in your pocket by the way. And then what you do is you um, do your double lift again this time what you've done is you have this one face up, this is face down. So if you turn them over like this, notice that it's like back to back. So what I do with this is I put it on top. So I'll have it like this. I'll put it on top. I'll reach and grab the diamond, leave my hand on that, talk about how diamonds are a girl's best friend. Oh, I'll put the deck down. That's what I'll do. And with my other hand, this one, I'll put the diamond in my other pocket. This one, I'll reach for the diamond. I'll Take the diamond same way as before, but this time I will place it under the whole deck. So now you have the whole deck, then you have the diamond. And what I'll do is I'll talk about diamonds are a girl's best friend, yada, yada, yada. And what I'll do is I will shake the card like this. As I shake the card, I'll just rotate my wrist so it turns that card over. So what I'll do is I'll shake it, turn it over, and then I'll immediately place this card back on top. What that does is because they're back to back, when you turn this card over and you drop it on top of the deck, it looks like the deck is natural. So you have it showing like this. Again, don't flash the bottom, place it right on top, and then take it off. Now, when you're doing the shaking, you're going to release your fingers right down here at the bottom. You're going to release fingers right down here at the bottom. And as you do the shaking of the card, you're going to shake it close to the deck like this. And as you do, you're going to turn it over and drop that diamond so it falls to the table. And then you can place this card right on top and drop that. That's another way to do the reveal of the diamond. You can do the shake if you want. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you do. You could do the, um, the, the shaking and the dropping if you want like that. Or, or you could do the holding it in your hand and flick the card and have the diamond fall. Whatever you want to do, whatever way you want to do is fine. I kind of like the flicking of the card myself because it kind of looks like you flick it and then it falls right off the card, which I think looks really cool. One other thing you can do with this trick, and if you want, you can use higher, uh, higher value cards for this instead of using an ace. You could use a 10 or a 9 or an 8 or something. And what you can do is first you can um, take the card and uh, erase off of a card, all the pips off a card, so erase all the pips. Take another 9 or another, you can take a 9 or a 10 or whatever. If you, let's say you're using an 8, you could use a 9 or a 10. And you can cut out all of these pips and the same way you hold the diamond in your hand, you could hold all the little pips you cut out 
and you could uh, take the pips and flick them off the card, and you have the pips fall off the card, and then you have a blank card like this. If you want to do it that way, you can certainly do it that way as well. But I like the diamond because it's really shocking, especially when I say cup your hands to a spectator, and I flick the diamond into the spectator's hand. It's really, really cool. So that is um, diamonds are a girl's best friend. Hope you guys enjoyed the trick, and I'll see you next Friday for an all-new The School of Magic. I pour it right inside of here and notice that the milk, of course, you get the, the two tubes and you get a certain amount of bottles. Let me grab one of the bottles. A series on my channel where every single Friday I'll be uploading a brand new video in which I'll teach you how to do an easy magic trick.